Welcome everyone to another episode of Eat Sleep Drive. We are here in my home state of Ohio and uh, it's a special day because this is the world debut, public debut of the new Honda Civic Type R. And while all the specs haven't quite come out for this car yet, we can learn some things today just seeing this thing in public. Um, so first of all, very exciting to be able to compare it to, you can see in the background here, the old Civic Type R with the new one. First thing of note is this car is about a second faster around Suzuka than the old Civic Type R limited edition. That was the fastest iteration of the last car. And of course, this one is faster than that. Now we don't know much about the engine specs yet. Um, it's probably gonna be basically the same engine, maybe a little more horsepower. That's all speculation at this point. Nobody really knows. But what is interesting, uh, and one of the things that we can definitely account for with uh, the added lap time is the difference in wheels and tire package. Just visually, we can see here, the old car was running 245, 30, 20s, uh, so 20 inch wheels. These have 19 inch wheels and they're 265, 30s. So we are having a wider contact patch, of course, is gonna be more grip to go along with that. Along with the grip, uh, certainly difference in aero you can see on this car. The last generation car rather notoriously had some overheating issues early in its run that they ultimately fixed. But this car, you can see a huge front air dam. The intercooler uh, space is just absolutely huge. I really don't see this having the same issues that we had in the last car. And I'm sure Honda's gonna wanna be in front of that and not deal with this, this same thing that they dealt with the last generation. Another thing of note in the front here, similar to the last generation model, you're gonna have like your adaptive uh, cruise control radar cruise that's the sensor in the front also gonna double as your honda logo as we come to the side here we're gonna see more functional vents more aerodynamics uh, they're venting the air around or from the wheel well coming out here similar to the last generation model another difference is you can see in the last generation model they had a sort of like more of a ram air scoop for engine cooling and now we're venting the air coming this way so more aerodynamic improvements. Just looking at the side profile of the car, we can also see the rear, uh, the side strakes, if you will, um, are a little more shaped than the, the last generation one and appear to me a little bit lower. So once again, just trying to keep the air around the car, not under the car and keep it from lifting. Coming to the back here, um, there's definitely been some changes to the wing. Uh, obviously the last car was more of a hatch um, as this one is as well, but the sort of angle is quite different. And while the wing is not adjustable, it is sort of fashioned onto the car in a way and bolted to the car in a way, and I'll give you guys some close-ups later, that it looks like you could probably design some brackets to be able to change the angle of the wing. I'm sure Honda doesn't want you to modify that or doesn't want you to do that from factory because you'll mess with the aerodynamics, but if you're really getting serious about racing, that's probably something that you can do. Another interesting thing that they've taken away, uh, which I find quite interesting, is in the old car, there are vortex generators right here. And we'll show you that. And those are meant to direct airflow under the wing. Those are now gone, uh, which is kind of interesting. You would expect that kind of stuff. And it is functional. It's not just for cosmetics. You would expect that kind of thing to stick around. Coming to the back of the car, uh, it's very similar to the last generation car. We have the three exit exhaust, which is sort of iconic to the Type R at this point. It's, it's funny to me because the in the last generation car, the two outside ones have the bigger diameter and then the inside one was smaller and they've gone opposite here. I don't think there's anything to look into there other than just cosmetics, but kind of an interesting thing of note. Um, while we're also back here talking about sort of this shape and everything, it's pretty apparent even with the camouflage that this is just a less busy car. In the, in the previous generation car, you have all kinds of stuff going on right here, um, non-functional venting. So that is a first look at the new Civic Type R. We're gonna walk around the rest of mid-Ohio for the Honda Indy 200, and uh, we'll give you some footage of the Indy cars here. One thing I didn't mention while doing this walk around is how much of a difference there is in the fenders of the two cars. The old car has a sort of stuck-on fender look, 
Uh, it just doesn't look as finished to me as the new car. The new car, the fenders are very sculpted and it just looks a lot more cohesive to me. And that was probably one of the other biggest things outside of it just being less busy than, than the old car. It just looks cleaner and more well thought out from the factory. If you follow IndyCar at all, you'll know that there are some rumors about Colton Herta potentially going to F1. I think they're a little bit far-fetched, but it would be super cool to have an American in F1. So whether it's him or somebody else, I do hope it happens. The Indy cars were pretty cool to watch, but my favorite thing of the weekend was the trophy trucks. Oh, dude, that is so high. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you did, and hopefully we will have the Type R very soon in our hands and have a first drive video for you.